Today, I want to speak to you on the secrets of the unstoppable achievers. The five major secrets of unstoppable achievers. In actual fact, I will give you seven if my time allows. I want to speak to everyone watching me, young or old. I want to speak to you about the six, seven secrets of unstoppable achievers. I will attempt five. If I have the time, I will reach seven. Uh, so get ready because something is about to come to you that will perhaps inspire you, motivate, or influence you. Whatever the case may be, I'd like us to bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you for this moment. Thank you for this special privilege that I do have to speak your word to your children. And I ask that you take my pen and my tongue and make it like the pen of a ready writer. Cause me to speak a word in season to a man or woman or boy or girl who is in dear need of your word. I want to ask my God and my father that the words that I will speak will be spirit empowered. I want to ask that you bypass my preparation and contemplation. I pray that you will wing these words by the power of your spirit to motivate, direct, instruct, guide, and to some extent bring about a turnaround in someone's life. We don't need to wait to see the end before we give you the glory and the praise. To you alone be all of it. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. Amen and amen. Well, let me quickly start by talking about one word unstoppable that is the key to our conversation today to be unstoppable who will not want to be unstoppable everyone wants to be unstoppable in your career you want to be unstoppable constantly conquering levels dimensions realms and kingdoms every one of us want to be unstoppable in our finances Moving from hundreds to thousands and, and thousands to millions and millions to billions and then billions to trillions. And my son said to me, have you thought about gazillions? Who will not want to be unstoppable in terms of business expansion, colonization of the market space? Who will not want to be unstoppable? Everybody deep on the inside of us, there is a secret quest to be unstoppable. Right on the inside of you is a secret desire to be unstoppable. Nobody likes to stagnate. Nobody wants to be at the same space, the same place, at the same point, the same position, the same level for too long. In actual fact, growth forbids stagnation. God created us for growth. So much so that even when physically as adults, when we stop growing tall, we grow in other ways. It is counterproductive to a living being not to grow. And growth requires that you are unstoppable. Once you are stopped from growing, then you begin to die. That is why today I want to talk to you about being unstoppable. And I will share five to seven things with you that will perhaps make you to begin to think of how to begin to cost correct and begin to achieve a new trajectory in your life history. Follow me carefully today as I take you through the word of the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 12 in verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 12 in verse 6. It's the story about a man by the name Moses. I've, I've been so concerned about the life of Moses. Moses was that young man that was born and hidden in a ball rushes. And, and after a while, he was exposed. And the daughter of Pharaoh picked him up and trained him in the ways of Egypt, preparing him to be the next king of Egypt. Years later, the Bible says that jo Moses came to a point of recognition. And he realized that his assignment was to the people of Israel. And at that point, he decided to attempt pursuing his assignment. But you all know the story. The first attempt, Moses failed. He achieved killing, but of course, he achieved also exposing himself. The long and short of it was that after the second attempt, Moses, feeling like a failure, dejected and rejected, 
feeling completely messed up, decided to run out of town. I'm talking to someone who has failed before. You've messed up. You've made some mistakes. You failed at achieving some things so much so that you didn't only fail once, twice, second time, three times. You failed severally. In fact, people have started calling you a serial failure. It's all right. There is nothing wrong with failing multiple times. Abraham Lincoln failed several times. But eventually, at the peak of his failure, he became the president of the United States. So the point I'm making right now is that there is absolutely nothing wrong with failing. There is something wrong with assuming the identity of a failure. That you failed doesn't mean you are a failure until you decided not to try again. There is nothing wrong with falling down. There is something wrong with staying there. I failed before. I've made mistakes before. But I'm a far departure. I've made some major departures away from my points of failure. Why? I chose not to stay where I failed. I chose not to be what happened to me. That you had a divorce doesn't mean that is who you are. That you messed up in an exam, that is, doesn't mean it is a sense of your intellectual judgment. The reality is you are usually better than what you failed at. The reason why we fail in life is because the variables of success were not properly articulated. So follow me today. You're going to be taking some notes. And I know as you're trying to take some notes, I will say some things. And you, you don't even know which one to write. So just listen. Try to write some notes. And at most, make sure that you watch the video again because i really want to share my heart with you today so follow me carefully moses failed and moses ran out of town someone is watching me right now from a distant country and the reason why you ran out of the reason why you're in the country where you are is because of so much of your history that you don't want to be a part of your destiny you ran out of town you made some mistakes where you were in your former country you ran out of the place because you messed up big time. Some of you have had to change your career because you messed up big time in your initial profession. Well, let me say this. You're not the only one. You're not the only one in history who's ever had to face that challenge. When I look at Moses, I began to ask myself, how was it that a man who failed in life so much so that when God looked at him and said, Moses, you are still the person that I want to use to deliver a nation. No, 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 no. And Moses said, Lord, why even call someone like me? First, I, I'm a failure. I messed up. I ran out of town. And then you're calling me to do what I failed to, trying to do. And, and God, this is not right. And God is still insistent saying, listen to me. You may have failed at it. You are still my chosen servant. I'm speaking redemptively to a man, to a woman who perhaps have failed God at some point. And you're beginning to think you no longer deserve to be used by God. Let me say something right now before you write off yourself. Let me remind you that yes, it is true that you failed. But let me say this, that didn't surprise God. Your failure didn't come as a surprise to God. That you sinned didn't come as a surprise to God. It is important for you to understand that God is not the one that gets to know. Our God is omniscient, omniscient. Our God is always known before anything ever happens. So God is not surprised that you messed up. And the same God who is not surprised is still saying, you are my chosen. I still have a plan for you. Plans of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. That God sent me to tell you, I'm not done with you yet. That God sent me to tell you, it's time to throw away the garment of past memories of failure. Throw that away and pick up your mantle of destiny again. Because God is not done with you yet. Moses accepted the call. 
And as I look at the historical surrounding Moses, one of the most amazing things to me was that as I look at this man, one man led about two million people. One man brought water out of the rock. One man split the, the Red Sea into two. One man, victories wrought through him. And I said, how did the man go from being a failure to such an unstoppable achiever? Nothing stopped Moses except God. Nothing could stop Moses except when Moses did not sanctify God. No force on earth could have stopped him. Moses became invincible. Moses was the one that will pray and the earth will open up and swallow up all those who were opposing his leadership. Moses became such a powerful person. How did a failure become a powerful man overnight? How can somebody go from being a non-entity to such a powerful entity? The reality is that will be the story of your life. You are going from being stopped to becoming unstoppable. I know that failure stopped you, but get ready because you are about to become unstoppable in the world of success. You are about to become unstoppable in the world of finances. You are about to become unstoppable in your career. I speak prophetically to you right now that in the name that is above every other name, even the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the God of Moses is about to be your God. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, in verse 6, the Bible puts it this way. Samuel, the prophet of God, became so interested in the life of Moses and was trying to understand how did Moses succeed? How did that man become unstoppable? Listen to what Samuel, the prophet, found out in 1 Samuel chapter 12, in verse 6. Samuel said to the people, it is the Lord. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. Did you hear that? The reason why Moses was unstoppable, it, it's simply because it was the Lord that was advancing him. It was the Lord that was driving him. It was the Lord that was aiding him. It was the Lord that was assisting him. Samuel said to the people of Israel, if you wonder how Moses succeeded, he said it was the Lord that was advancing Moses. It was the Lord that advanced Moses. I came to say to someone here who has not been able to find strength in yourself. You've not been able to find strength in your history. You've not been able to find strength in your past, in your education, in your competencies, in your skill set. You've not been able to find strength to advance into the future. I'm talking to someone who's not been able to find strength to go against the racist tendency, the ethnic tendency that you find surrounding you acting as a limitation to your advancement. You've not been able to go past that Well, I came to let you know. That it was the Lord that advanced Moses. And I want you to type and declare, it is the Lord that is advancing me. It is a confession you need to make. Go ahead and type that. It is the Lord that is advancing me. Just go ahead and type that out. <laughs> it is the Lord that is advancing me. From today, you will no longer be hindered. From today, you will no longer be stopped. From today, you will no longer be thwarted. From today, you will no longer be limited, put to shame, have obstacles that stand in your path. From today, like Moses was advanced, heaven will advance you. The God of heaven will advance you. You will begin to break limits. You will begin to cross levels. You will begin to go beyond dimensions. You will begin to go into realms. You will begin to enter kingdoms in the name of Jesus Christ. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. How do you become an unstoppable achiever? How do you become an unstoppable achiever? The word unstoppable means to be unbeatable. My goodness. 
I'm speaking to a CEO. I'm speaking to someone who is in an, a competitive environment. To be unstoppable means to be unbeatable. When God is advancing your business, it becomes an unbeatable enterprise. For those of us who are in ministry, when God is advancing your ministry, it becomes an unbeatable assignment. So to be unstoppable means to be unbeatable. It means to be unsurpassable. It simply means to be gritty. It simply means to be persistent. To be unstoppable means you are someone who is gritty. You have grit. That you are able to sustain your passion, your interest. You are able to sustain your momentum until the end. That your latter days are usually better than your past. You are a gritty person. You are unstoppable. Like Joshua, you keep conquering territories until your last day on earth. It is what it means to be unstoppable. It means to be persistent. It means to be resilient. It means to be relentless. An unstoppable person is a relentless person. An unstoppable person is a resilient person. An unstoppable person, person is a persistent person. An unstoppable person is a gritty person. Unstoppable individuals are courageous. They have the self that surpasses themselves. Can I say that again? <laughs> uh, unstoppable people have a sense of self that surpasses themselves. They have the ability to withstand pressure with grace. Meaning that they can stand under pressure and still look gracious. These are unstoppable individuals. They have an unbreakable spirit. They are the individuals who will go through hell and high water and will not allow themselves to be drowned. These are individuals who will go through hell's kitchen and will not smell like smoke. They will go through the lion's den and come out on hot. These men are unstoppable. These are individuals who will write an exam and, and write it again and, and write it again and never give up until they pass. They are unstoppable. These are individuals who go from investment to investment and one loss to another loss and will not give up until they become multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires. They are unstoppable. These are individuals who will come to the presence of God to pray. Initially, five minutes is difficult and yet they will come back again and five, seven minutes is still difficult and they will keep coming back until one day it is one hour, two hours and, and three hours and nine hours in the presence of God. They are unstoppable. These are individuals like Ariu Dabi that will go to market their product and they will hear no, no, no. Every door they knock on, they keep hearing no and will say, listen to me. It doesn't matter how many no's I get. I know there is one yes that will make me forget all the no's. They keep on keeping on until life begins to re reward them. These unstoppable people are men of God who are in ministry and, and the first year ministry, nothing is happening. The seventh year ministry, nothing seems to be happening. Their dreams are bigger than their results. Uh, their passion is stronger than their expression. And they are wondering why am I seeing so much in the spirit, but I'm seeing so little outside. They are investing and investing. They are tired time, resource, and energy into ministry, and they are not seeing the kind of results that they want to get, and yet they will stay there because all the days of their appointed time, they will wait on the Lord until they are changed coming. They are unstoppable. I'm talking about a couple who is waiting on God for the fruit of the womb. Year one, no child. Year two, no child. Year two, year three, no children. And 
and yet in the spirit they are seeing their sons they are seeing their daughters they are even calling them by name and they are wondering why am i not seeing in the physical the children that i see in the spirit what in the world is going on and yet they will not stop trying they will keep trying like Anna they will keep coming to Shiloh that they come the first year no child they come the second no conception and they never give up on God they understand that in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 the Bible say cast not away your confidence which has great recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God you might obtain the reward for yet a little while and he he that will come will come and will not tarry for the lord has no pleasure in those who shrink back unto perdition these are men and women who will wait until their change cometh they will hang on they will stay in the fight that the result have not yet come it's no reason why they give up no 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 they are fighters rugged dogged committed resilient unshakable unbreakable they are just they are they are not twistable they are not individuals who will throw in the towel no 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 they are like shadrach meshach abednego they would say to the nebuchadnezzars of this life even if our god does not come to our rescue we are not quitting on god we are not giving up we are unstoppable we are unbeatable we are unsurpassable we are resilient persistent we are relentless we are individuals with unbreakable spirit. Somebody type and declare, I'm not quitting now. I'm not, I'm not giving up now. Type and declare that I'm not giving up now. No, 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 no. Listen carefully in case you don't understand the group of people I'm talking about. These are no spineless worms. These are men and women with tough, tough minds. These are individuals like David whose mind is fixed on God whose hearts are fixed on their savior. They are not pushovers. They are men and women who will stay there. Like my wife and I had to stay. We stayed the first year, the second year waiting for our second child, waiting the third year, the fourth year and every day 4 a.m. in the morning I had to appear before the Lord I will not allow waiting to weaken my faith and in the seventh year the girl we waited for showed up medically unaided but supernaturally performed by the hand of our God I'm speaking to, to a family who doesn't need to give up someone is watching me you are an investor and you pushed your money. You lost money on Bitcoin. You lost, m lost money on Forex. Almost everywhere you put your money, you seem to have lost. Hey, let me say this. Serial losses doesn't in any way confer on you the status of a loser. You are not a loser. You have simply learned better ways of not doing it again. I hear the Lord saying, do it again. I hear the Lord saying, invest again, this time around, by the leadings of the Spirit of God. So hear me and hear me well. What are the secrets of unstoppable achievers? Number one, unstoppable achievers see the future. Matakala Kotia. Unstoppable achievers, they see the future. Marakate. That's why they are unstoppable. Apostle Akiolasa, Akintolasa, thank you so very much for bringing us on board together. We honor you and your wife once again. Sir, one of the things that I found out about men and women who don't give up it's not because that they've not faced enough battles in life. Here's the key, sir. I found out that their minds have been captured by the future that they see. So much so that the trials of the moments weighed with the future that they see is nothing to be compared. So they trudge through, they fight through, they persist because they've been captured by the future.
They have a mental picture of a preferred future. In their imaginative realm, they have seen possibilities. Therefore, actualities cannot stop them in the way to their possibilities and realities. Physical realities don't stop them because they've captured the sense of spiritual realities being turned into physical realities. These people have seen the future. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You can endure anything if you can see something that captures your mind. If you can see the future, you can overcome the moment. If you can see the future, you can overcome the trials of today. The reason why men give up is because the Bible says where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no vision, the people live carelessly. Where there is no vision, the people give up on the need to pursue anything. So I want to say to someone watching me right now, recapture the picture of a prevailing future. See the future. There is a better tomorrow than your current today. Your today is nothing compared with the future that God is given to you. The reason you have today is because yesterday was not perfect. And the reason God is giving you tomorrow is because today is also imperfect. However, today is a womb where tomorrow is being prepared for. Why don't you begin to prepare today for what tomorrow will look like? Can I share with you again one of the major secrets of highly successful Mark Zuckerberg, of highly successful Bill Gates, and, and highly successful uh, Oprah Winfrey, Alakijas, and just name them Dubai, Singapore, name anybody, or of men of God like Bishop Oedipo, our fathers in, in the apostolic church. The reason why ordinary men if you know the history of the apostolic church, the reason why ordinary men have been able to do extraordinary things is because of vision. I therefore challenge the next generation of people, young people emerging from the apostolic church to see farther than your fathers have seen. The vision of your fathers have planted apostolic church across the nations. It's time for the next generation of the apostolic church to say our fathers have brought us to this side of Jordan. We, like Joshua, will see father into territories and nations and we will take nations. We will take cities. We will build churches. We will capture platforms. I speak to the next generation of the apostolic church across the world. It's time to rise above and accomplish much more than your fathers have done. Let me challenge you. The apostolic church worldwide. If what you have is what your fathers gave to you. And you never make anything better than what your fathers with their limited education. If you never rise to do much more than they have done. You have made a mess of their sacrifices. You have made a mess of their fastings. I put the challenge before people like Dr. Davis. Take it to the next level. Dr. Akinola, Akintola, challenge the young people. Take it to the next level. The apostolic church can be more than this. It can be better than this. It can be greater than this. And the reality is, if it is going to happen, we need Joshua's, we need Caleb's, we need Othniel's, we need Samson's, we need the next generation. And take it to the next level. Somebody by the name of E.A. Adeboye, our father in the Lord of the redeemed Christian church of God, was a young man, a doctor, who began to interpret for his father in the Lord before his father went to be with the Lord. How many branches of redeem did redeem had when Baba left to be with the Lord. But look at where redeem is today. I put this challenge. Before the younger generation. Of the apostolic church worldwide. It's time to wake up. And stop playing church.
It's time to remember that our yes. fathers have laid the foundation. It's yes. time for us to cross the Jordan. It's yes. time for us to take territories. It's time for us to do exploits. We can be unstoppable. But it all begins with a vision of what the apostolic church can be as against what the apostolic church has been. Apostolic church can be better than what it is, bigger than what it is, reach farther than it has reached. But that is dependent on whether the current generation can see farther, can see wider, can see deeper, can see higher. I put it at your doorstep. Next generation, rise. And someone is saying, but Pastor Sam, I'm not even a member of the apostolic church. Well, why don't you take it beyond where your father stopped? I challenge you to do more, be more, know more, have more than your father had. Your parents with their limited education in a manual generation handed you what you have today. It is incumbent upon you in a digital era with so much network access to a global community. It is incumbent upon you to take it farther, to take it wider, higher, to take it wider than your parents handed it to you. I challenge you to be more. I challenge you to know more. I challenge you to have more. I challenge you to reach more. I challenge you to break more. I challenge you to go beyond more. It's time to say, listen, Moses brought it here. Joshua will take it there. How far can you take it? Where will you take it to? Will your father watching you from the grandstand of heaven be clapping for you today? I'm asking you a question. If your father has gone to be with the Lord, your mother has gone to be with the Lord. Or maybe they will soon go to be with the Lord. Will they look at you 10 years down the line and be saying, praise God, you made us proud. You made us proud. Will they join from the cloud of witness to celebrate you on the grandstand of life? Saying you've made us proud. Unstoppable people see the future. A generation late 1960 a generation in abu dhabi and dubai came together and they saw the future they said listen why should we be a country why should we be a kingdom that people only fly over what can we do to force people to land here and Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai came together, their kings, and they saw a beautiful Dubai in a desert. Everything you have today was not there then, but they saw it in their minds. Everybody wants to go to a Dubai today, but the reality is it is a product of men's vision. They saw the future. They said, if we build it, men will come. And sure, indeed, men are coming. Can you see, young man, can you see in South Africa, can you see beyond just going out and, and sleeping around with girls and impregnating school girls? Can, can you see farther than that? Young girl watching me in, in South Africa, in Soweto, in, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Swaziland, in, in, in Uganda, in Zimbabwe. Can you see more than just hanging around with men? Young girl, can you see yourself becoming the sea? CEO of one of the biggest banks in South Africa. Young girl, can you see yourself one day becoming the CEO of a multinational company in your country? Young girl, there is more to life than just having braids on. There is more to life than having extended fingers and, and acrylic uh, fingers and, and extended eyelashes. There is more to life, young man, than sagging your jeans and, and having your pants hang out. Young man, you are more than and just a saggy jeans and, and pants hanging out. You are a brain. You are beautiful. You have a destiny. You are sent to this world for more than that. You are more than one who hangs around in a joint just drinking away your future and destroying your destiny with dopes, thinking it will give you hope. You can't get hope in dope. No, you find hope in Christ. 
It's time to look at your house. It's time to look at the family you come from. Is this the kind of family you want to also hand over to your children, young people? I've been to Soweto and when I see the houses in Soweto, I ask myself a question. I said, this has been on years in and year out and, and this has been on for decades. The same Shanti community in Soweto is still there. You still have them. When will somebody say, listen, I was born in this Shanti community, but I refuse to die here. Who will say, listen, I'm in the low income area in Johannesburg. I, I was born in this low income area, but I refuse to die here. I will rise to the top. It begins with a vision. A mental picture of a preferred future. A mental future of a future that is better than your today. See the future. See the future identify, identify who you are. Redefine your identity. You are not a loser. You are not a failure. You are a child of the most high God made in the image of God. Your ethnicity matters not. Your tribe does not matter. And it really doesn't matter the color of your skin. You were born of God. You were born of God. You carry in you something that is superior to race. You carry on the inside of you something that is superior to color and creed and something that is superior to regions of your birth. You are a superior species born by the most high God if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. You are a co-creator with God. Understand that that is your identity. You are not a loser like they say you are. You are not a failure like they say you are. You are not useless as they say you are. That's not your identity. See the future. See yourself in the future. See yourself coming back to Soweto and, and clearing some houses and moving the owners of those houses into new apartments properly built. Yes, you can. Yes, you will. Yes, you must. Because that's who you were created to be. That's your identity. You are a lender to nations. You are not a borrower. You are not a struggler. You are not here to survive. You are here to thrive. You have a purpose. You don't just have an identity. You have a purpose. God sent you here on a mission. You were born not by chance. Your father and your mother may have had you out of wedlock. They didn't plan to have you. But trust me, you were in the plan of God. You may be a child out of rape. Yes, the man raped your mother to have you. But trust me, he did not rape your destiny. You still have a destiny unstained, a destiny untouched. You were born to be somebody special. You may have grown up and they told you that nobody even knows who your father or your mother is. Let me tell you this. Your father, your mother doesn't matter when it comes to the equation of destiny. David said, when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will bear me up. There is a God who can make out of you what father and mother cannot do. Understand your identity so you can see the future. Understand your purpose. And understand your assignment. You are here on assignment. There are many assignments you will carry out in your lifetime in order to accomplish your purpose. So your assignment this time may not be your assignment tomorrow. But all this assignment will lead you to fulfilling your purpose. Don't get stuck in one assignment. Learn to move when an assignment is over so you can fulfill your purpose. Number two secret of unstoppable achievers. Number two secret, they design the plan. They don't just see the future. They design the plan. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the plan. So the God that we serve is a God who is committed to planning. When you see the future, 
you plan the plan. Planning is winning. Those who plan win. We've been told before that poor planning results in poor performance. Planning does not necessarily guarantee the fact that you will win, but the absence of it guarantees the fact that you will lose. Do you have a 10-year plan? Do you have a 5-year, 3-year, 2-year, 1-year plan? Do you have a weekly plan? Without a plan, you go to sleep like a blunder. You can't wake up as a wonder. It is dangerous to anoint yourself with oil without seeing the future and designing the plan. Have a plan. Plan like there is no God and pray like there is no plan. Get your plan from the presence of God. It is critical that you design a plan. How do you accomplish what you want to accomplish? Design the plan. Number three, engage the process. Engage the process. See the future. Design the plan into that future. And the plan should include your goals. The plan should include your objectives. The plan should include your daily task. The plan includes two major things. Your lead measure and your lag measure. Your lead measure is what you're planning to accomplish. Your lag measure is what you do on a daily basis to get there. Have a plan. So see the future. Design the plan. Engage the process. Planning without engagement leads to frustration. I know you have a plan. What I don't see is how action-oriented you are. I know you plan on how you're going to be a millionaire. What I have not seen is your engagement of the process. And a man who may not have such a detailed bogus plan, who engages the process with the little plan he has, may be more successful than you, who has a bogus plan, but you are not action-oriented. You've talked too much about what you want to do. We are challenging you now on this conference ground. We are saying to you, enough of talking about it. The time to get it done has come. It is time to do what you said you want to do. Engage the process. Wake up every morning and get out there and do something about it. Number four, find the platform. Everything you were born to be, everything you want to do, will find expression on a platform. Find the platform. There are seven platforms on earth. Arts and entertainment, media and sports. You also have education, religion, government. You have finance. Find the platform where your assignment will find expression. What you want to accomplish, do you want to do it in the world of commerce? In the world of business, in the world of finances, unstoppable men find their platforms. They know where they fight. They know where they engage the process. They know the platform that amplifies them. Monkeys know that their platforms are on trees. Sharks know that their platform is in the ocean. Earthworms know that their platform is in the earth. Lions know that their platforms are in jungles. It is critical that you find your platform. Your platform amplifies your gift. The reason why you may not be doing well may not be because you are not called or gifted. It might just be you are the right person speaking to the wrong audience. Find 
your platform. If you are a monkey, be on trees. If you are a shark, get into the waters. If you are a lion, stay in the jungles. If you are an earthworm, burrow through the earth. Your genius finds expression on your platform. Build the network, number five. Build the network. Whatever you want to accomplish on earth, you can't do it alone. You need a network of human beings. You need a team. You need synergy or synergy. You need people with different abilities and competencies, skill sets, coming together to work with you in order to be unstoppable. Unstoppable achievers build networks. They build it within their church. They build it across their church. They build it within their families. They build it across their families, within their communities, around their cities, across the nation, and across the nations of the earth. People who do mind-blowing things, hum human beings who are unstoppable, companies and churches who are unstoppable, build relationships. They build partnerships. The reason I'm here today speaking with you is because I have a relationship with Dr. Davis and he has a relationship with your pastor on the strength of relationship. I'm speaking with you today. I will normally not do that for anybody. But relationship is making me do what I will normally not do. If you know very well, pastors don't like to preach on, on Saturdays. But relationship. When you build big relationships, you can build, make big requests and then you can get big results. Let me say that again. When you build big relationships, you will have to be able to make big requests and then you can get big results. Number six, seize the opportunity. Success comes in doses of opportunities. Success comes in trenches or tranches of opportunities. It is critical for you to learn to see and seize opportunities. Sometimes opportunities come in form of complaints. When people are complaining about something they don't have, it's an opportunity for you to create the solution, solve the problem, and get paid in return. Unstoppable people always listen to complaints. Unstoppable people always seize the opportunity to provide solutions and advance in life. Unstoppable people seize the opportunities. They eliminate their fears. They maximize the moment. It doesn't matter who you are, whether in America, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, success comes in tranches of opportunities and it is critical for you to learn to see and seize opportunities ahead of others so that you can take the lead. Somebody once observed that young people in his communities where in his community were walking barefooted to school. That led him to come up with a solution that makes available uh, you know, shoes for kids at an affordable price. Today, he is an exceptionally wealthy person. He didn't start out to make money. He started out to solve a problem. He saw it. He created a solution. And today, he is such a wealthy person. Seize the opportunity. Number seven, and I will stop here. Strengthen your power base. Everything I've shared with you are wonderful. They can really get you so far. But trust me, if you want to really go far, strengthen your power base. Your power base is your place of intimacy with God. Your power base is where you get grace to accomplish much more than everything that we have shared so far. A man of grace wins the race. A graced man cannot be compared with one powered by energy. There's a difference between one powered by human energy and one powered by the grace of God. The results are usually different. The difference between a bond man, a born son, and the promised son, usually very different. I therefore challenge you, if your relationship with God has been going down, it's time to build it up again. Build up your power base. 
Get back in the place of prayer, young man. Pursue your God in the days of your youth. Learn to pray hours before marriage comes. It is not a crime to be single now. In actual fact, it's an opportunity to build competencies that marriage may not allow you to build. It's time to learn to pray consistently and develop the culture of prayer. Develop the culture of studying the word. Develop the culture of service. Develop the culture of giving. Take your career to another level. In this, your days of youthfulness, don't be carried away with pleasure. Here is the secret. Those who give up pleasure now will handle treasure later. And treasure carries pleasure, but pleasure doesn't carry treasure. You have a choice to pursue pleasure now and lose your treasure in the future. Or give up pleasure now and go after treasure, knowing that if you find the treasure, you will have pleasure. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of words. It's such an honor and a privilege for us to have come your way today. And if you are watching me and you've not given your life to Lord Jesus Christ, or you've walked away from God, may I humbly ask you to say this few words with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I'm backsliding and I cannot save myself. I ask that you come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal savior. Amen and amen. 